Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do um, slow motion. Um, first, what settings you need to have your camera in before you even shoot so that you can get a nice, smooth, slow motion shot. And two, I'm gonna show you how to use a program called Twixter. Now, Twixter is fairly expensive. I believe it's sitting around $150 to $200, if I'm not correct. And uh, what it does is it takes the frames and it makes them look a lot smoother. Um, if you use Final Cut, or uh, Premiere, you notice that when you just slow the duration down, um, sometimes the slow motion kind of looks, uh, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't feel like it fits um, because it's missing a few frames. And especially if you're shooting at 24 frames and you try to slow 24 frames down, it looks pretty messy. So, of course, you're going to need to shoot in 60 frames per second. Um, now, some of you can only shoot in 50, or you're going to need, some of you can only shoot at 50 frames per second where you need to shoot at 60. Um, 50 frames per second works, that's for people that are overseas. For people that have that and want to change it, if you go down to your video system, go from PAL. If you're on PAL and you want the 60 frames, go to NTCS. So mainly all you're going to do is you're going to hit menu and the very last wrench and you're going to hit NTCS if you want the 60 frames, 60 frames and 24 frames. Or if not, then you can keep it on PAL and I believe you get 50 and 30 frames per second with the PAL setting. Um, so as you can see, let's go to the menu. Let's go to the second red one, movie record. You want to pick this one. So you want to get the uh, 1280 by 720 at 60 frames per second. Um, and as far as shooting is concerned, you want to drop your shutter down as low as possible. Now this is something someone may know the answer to that I actually don't. If it's better to shoot at a higher shutter speed when you know you're going to be doing slow-mo or a lower shutter speed. I'm going to go with the lower shutter speed. Um, and that means all I have to do is adjust my aperture and my ISO to fit the setting. So I've dropped it all the way down to the shutter at 60. Um, so the ISO is at 100 and the aperture is at 4.5 right here. Now we are inside, so I'm going to go outside to shoot uh, a little clip so that we have something to edit with for our, as far as the uh, slow-mo is concerned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside, reset up my ISO and my aperture um, until I get the lighting just right. And then I'm probably just going to jump in the air and then we're going to bring it into uh, Premiere and then bring it into After Effects. And I'm going to walk you through the process of actually um, using Twixter and, and being able to do the slow motion. Um, I've been trying to figure this out for a while and uh, I finally figured out some of the mistakes I was making. It is not nearly as easy as I thought it would be to actually use Twixter and get that really nice uh, slow motion out of it if you, um, if you don't know what you're doing because there's a lot of settings that people skip in the tutorials on YouTube. So I'm hopefully gonna try to go over all the proper settings so that when you watch this video, you'll be able to use Twixter and feel confident about it and understand how things work. So let's go shoot a clip and let's start editing. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to use Adobe Premiere um, to start your basic edit for your slow-mo and then send it on over to After Effects. And once it's over at After Effects, we will uh, go through all of these steps and uh, use Twixter. So the first thing we're gonna do is we just open up a brand new project in Adobe Premiere. So I'm gonna name it slow-mo. Um, and I've already got a slow-mo file saved, but I'm gonna go on and overwrite that. Um, and yes, 1080 by 24p. That is what we want to do, so we'll go on and click OK. It's going to open up. Now I'm using two screens, so let me drag my timeline over. Here it is, and we need to shrink it down just a tad bit. And now we need to go find the footage that I'm going to turn into a slow-mo. So we're going to go to the computer, editing, let's see here, media unlocked, Twixter, and this was the T3i raw footage. And let's grab this one and it's going to go on and import in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub through and figure out where I want the slow mode to start. So there I am. So let's back it up right as I'm coming into the screen. So go on and put an in point and let's make an out point. And there's my out point. So we want to drag and drop this into the timeline. We'll make the timeline a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to go on and kill the audio because I don't want the audio in this. So we'll go on and kill the audio. 
right click and now we want to click the replace with After Effects composition. So what it's going to do is it's going to send it over to After Effects. So now we are in After Effects. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to click on our composition which is this I believe, yes. So our composition is the three seconds long as you can see. Three whole seconds and we need to make it longer before we do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and click on the composition settings. Oops, excuse me. Right click and then composition settings. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. So you need to make sure that you do this right because it's going to really screw up um, your slow motion and this is what kind of got me at first. So the first thing is I'm not shooting at 23.967 or 975 or 976. Uh, frames per second. I'm actually shooting at 59.94. Now I don't know why the computer reads it like that, but that's what it always pops up as. Not 60 frames per second, but 59.94, even though I shot at 60 frames. And the next thing is your duration. Okay, so this whole entire clip is 3.18 3 seconds long. So we need to make the duration a little bit longer. So we'll make it, let's say, 20 seconds. Now what that does is that allows you pretty much to make your timeline a little bit bigger. So as you saw right there, and it's something no one really explains, I just came across the other day, by lengthening it, your t by lengthening it there under your composition settings um, right here, um, you're, you're able to pretty much lengthen your timeline. So now we are going to go back to the video and we've got a few more steps to do. Um, first thing is we need to do this, this will help, this is called enable frame blending. Now, um, this helps with the, well, pretty much it's self explanatory frame blending. Um, now we're going to right click. We're going to go to time. Now, time remapping. Now, pretty much from my understanding, what time remapping does is, is even though this footage is three seconds long, time remapping allows it to be nine, 12, whatever, however many seconds, however slow it goes, to uh, pretty much allows you to slow it down and make the actual clip um, expand. Now if you didn't do time remapping, what would happen is the whole entire clip um, would uh, not expand. So if you dropped it down to 20% off of 100, that's you're only going to actually get 20% of that 3 seconds. And that's all it's going to get. Actually, I will actually show you what that looks like. So we're going to go turn off time, um, time remapping. So let's just pull over Twixer in theory. Um, so we want to drop this down to... And again, you're going to have to fix this to 59.94. And you do need to shoot into 60 frames per second to really get this to work very well. And let's 20 seconds, right? So, and this is your frame by frame button. So let's frame it. And as you can see, my footage that I was using is not there because I was going, um, because I didn't do the time remap. So what we're going to do is we're going to Command Z, we're going to go all the way back out. See there, I pop, I pop back into the screen right here um, because it's not, it's going to expand when we do the time remap. And let's go on and get rid of, and by the way, Command Z is, is what you use to go back. So if you ever need to take steps back, it's Command Z or on a my control or my keyboard is Control Z. So um, on the Apple ones, it's uh, Command Z or Apple Z. So um, let's go back to time. Let's click on time enabled. One more thing we need to do: we need to do frame blending. We need to pick pixel motion. All right. So now we are ready to actually use Twixter. So we're going to drag Twixter on in. There it is. Uh, first thing you need to do: go on and change this to 59.94. And let's scroll down here to effect, and we want to click on Twixter and output control. So before we do anything, what we need to do is we need to figure out where we want the slow motion to start. So I want my slow motion. Now this could be your whole frame. If you send the whole entire clip in and that's what you want, the whole entire clip to be slow motion, you can do it that way, or you can do what's called keyframes and just pick parts of the clip that you want to go in slow motion. So I'll have the slow motion start right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on speed. I'm going to click on keyframe. So we've already got a keyframe. So now, now, now what we're going to do is go one frame. We're going to move one frame ahead. We're going to drop this down to, let's make this really slow motion here. We'll drop it down to 
of what it originally is. So, oops. All right, you know what? I'm just going to go in and put 10 in there. So 10%. So now what we're going to do is we are going to scrub through it till we get to where we want it to go back to normal speed. And if this ever happens and you run out of footage, what's happening is is that you need to expand your footage here up at the top. Another thing most people don't explain. So there we go. And we could just have it stop in midair. So like something like this. Let's have the slow motion stop and go back to, well, we could even speed it up if we wanted to. So keyframe. Now we're going to go to one frame again. And let's bring it up to, let's say, 120% for the rest of it. And so the rest of this would be 120%. Let's move this up a little bit more, and perfect. So I want it to do about right here. And now you have done slow motion. So now what we're going to do is we're going to downsize Adobe After Effects. Now, if you're just using Adobe After Effects, what you'll do is you'll you'll go File and you'll do New, and then you'll do New Project, um, which will be a new composition. And then you'll drag and drop. Say your file's here. You'll drag and drop your file into here. Um, if you're not sending it from Adobe Premiere. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to downsize this. This is my Adobe Premiere. So what we need to do now is we need to render it um, and see how it looks. So we're going to render entire work area. So what it's going to go through is render everything out that I just did and I'm going to be actually able to see what um, my social effect looked like as I'm editing in the timeline. Um, one of the cool, cool things about uh, Adobe Premiere CS 5.5 so now it's uh, about to finish up rendering here and we're going to watch the clip and see how it looks. Alright, so and you don't have full screen mode unfortunately. I'm going to take my timeline out real quick onto my other screen. Um, so what I've been doing to get my full screen, and if there is full screen out there guys and I just don't know where that function is on Premiere, please let me know. Leave me a comment because I'd love to know where it's at. So, as you can see, I'll bring my timeline back in. We're going to start it from the beginning, and let's watch this thing. So here we go, and slow motion. Oh, see, I even made a mistake. So let me show you one mistake I just made. Um, I forgot to expand this clip as well, so I need to expand this clip to, um, to where as far out as I need it to go. So, And we'll stop it there. Go back a frame. And there we go. So that is expanded just right. And we're going to have to render it out one more time. My apologies. So now it's rendering out. It's only going to take a second. So you need to do the expansion in both uh, After Effects and Premiere. Um, that's where a lot of people get confused. They feel like the, you think your, your clip just gets cut off, but you just need to expand it. So. And there we go, we're rendering right now, almost done. And by the way, the short is almost done. Um, we, had, we went to the studio uh, Monday, which is today, the 19th of December, and we finished up the voiceover, so I've got maybe a day's worth of work um, left. So you should be seeing the video within the next seven days. I'll be posting on Facebook as soon as it's 100% complete. Um, I will be doing a... Um, a screening of it early to anybody that's interested um, like me on Facebook and which is David D images and leave your email address uh, you can message it to me or whatever or message it to me here on YouTube and anybody that messages me their email address will get a link a day before anybody else does to see the short so anybody that's really interested in seeing it before anybody else does all you have to do is uh, give me your email address so I can send it to you alright so let's take timeline out of here and let's see how it looks now here we go and I'm jumping. As you see, it goes real slow. And boom. And I'm out. And that is how you use uh, Twixter and, uh, with Adobe Premiere and then on over to Adobe After Effects and then back to Premiere. So that's kind of a one, it's, it's a simple workflow for people that do special effects. And two, um, this is how you, how you work the slow mo um, effect. So there it goes. And I'm going to show you guys, after I'm finished with this video, there'll be the actual original clip that I edited, and that will be up there for you to watch if you're interested in seeing it, um, so it's not looking into looking at Premiere while I'm 
recording the screen. So anyways, guys, thanks for your time. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, of course, messages, comments, I do the best I can to, t to stay on top of those. It does take me a couple of days. Sometimes I get so busy in life. Um, also, Twitter, Facebook, David D. Images, um, if you'd like to follow. Music